January 1st, 2023, a new medical malpractice law went into effect in California. In 1975, the insurance lobby and the doctors that they insured went to Governor Jerry Brown during his first period as governor and told him, we can't do business because we're getting sued too much and we're paying too many premiums and therefore uh, we're going to leave California. We're not going to treat patients in California because it's, the cost of doing business is just high. The thing is, this was all a fallacy. It was the insurance companies trying to take in premiums and not pay out when doctors were clearly negligent. And this law was not changed for nearly 50 years. And the most egregious limitations of the law were that a person that was malpracticed on, uh, where a doctor is clearly negligent, uh, could not sue for more than $250,000 for pain and suffering, loss of enjoyment of life, uh, maiming, even death. And this is clearly, clearly unfair and not constitutional, really, although it withstood constitutional challenges. But finally, it was changed this year. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what that involves and whether or not it should be implemented in a particular case. I'm Eli Castronova. I represent injured people in Los Angeles, California. I have represented people uh, that have been injured uh, and families that have lost a loved one as a result of a doctor's or a hospital's malpractice. I have done this many times and I've collected many, many settlements and judgments for these people. Unfortunately, up until recently, in fact, up until January of this year, it was very difficult for an attorney, including myself, to take these kinds of cases because very often uh, a person would die and they did not earn a lot of money or they weren't supporting a family uh, or most of their damages were uh, being maimed or uh, being somehow hurt, but not a loss of a lot of medical bills uh, or earnings. Uh, so it was difficult to take these cases because medical malpractice cases are some of the most expensive cases to pursue. Uh, an attorney, especially somebody in my office uh, that represents medical malpractice uh, people, uh, does not ask the client for money. Very often the client does not have enough money to pursue a case. Uh, so there is no justice if an attorney does not take the case. So we have to make sure that the case is number one, strong on the facts as far as proving that a doctor or hospital was at fault. Uh, and also that uh, its potential is great enough for cover recovering a lot of money in order to take that case. Now, $250,000 <clears> for pain and suffering or for loss of enjoyment of life sounds like a lot, but it's very little compared to the costs that are involved in taking these cases. It could cost $100,000, $150,000 to pursue a case uh, against a doctor or hospital because you have to get experts to testify that the doctor or the hospital did something wrong. And, uh, if you do not do that, you will lose your case because you have to present expert testimony. And even if you do get a, a strong case with a doctor who will testify for you, which is difficult to do, then many times juries are very, very hesitant to find judgments uh, against doctors because they think, well, we, we don't want to ruin a doctor's career over something that uh, went the wrong way. They didn't mean to do it, things of that nature. So we don't take many malpractice cases. Uh, we've done well on cases that we do take, but we don't take many. Uh, but the, the new law that passed uh, offers a little bit more compensation. Not really a lot, but it's something. Uh, the original law didn't uh, have any sort of uh, cost of living increase yearly. The new law does. 
the original law um, only caps uh, pain and suffering, loss of enjoyment of life at $250,000. Uh, starting January 1st, that becomes 350000 And then it goes in increments of 40000 uh, per year for the next 10 years, um, whereas uh, pain and suffering will, will cap out at $750,000 after 10 years. And then there will be a cost of uh, living increase of 2%, which is below what the real cost of living is. And on wrongful death cases, uh, it will increase from 250000 to 500000 uh, starting this year, and then go up 50000 a year for the next 10 years, where it will be capped at $1 million with also cost of living increases. But it's still very little uh, compared to, uh, let's say, a car accident case where there is a lot of insurance involved uh, and the injuries are bad. Those aren't capped at all. Slip and fall accidents, not capped at all. So you can have a case that's worth 4 or $5 million in a medical malpractice case, and all you get is $250,000 until this year. And after 10 years, 750000 or a million in a wrongful death case. Uh, car accident case, unlimited. Uh, we've collected millions and millions of dollars in settlements on cases that have the same kinds of injuries as medical malpractice cases. But as I said, it's a little bit, but not enough really, and not fair at all for the injured people or their family. <clears throat> but in, in cases that do involve medical malpractice, uh, sometimes we don't choose to assert medical malpractice. Now I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, we represent uh, the family of a woman who uh, tripped and fell outside of a building, fractured her leg, her femur, her thigh bone, uh, had surgery, it became infected, she lingered for a year, and then she died. Very horrible outcome from seemingly a, a um, routine kind of fracture that uh, normally heals itself after six months to a year. Uh, in this case, there may be medical malpractice because uh, she um, was treated in a very popular HMO hospital that we have throughout California. And the care really was suspect. Uh, first of all, she most likely contracted the infection while recovering from her surgery in the hospital. And the hospital should make sure that there are not agents uh, such as bacteria or viruses that can cause these kinds of infections. They should make sure their um, hospital rooms, their emergency rooms, their um, operating rooms are sterile. Uh, and sometimes they're not the best at doing this. Um, she may have uh, gotten less than adequate care or competent care in treating the infection. And all of this may have contributed to her death. But, as I said previously, medical malpractice uh, cases uh, only uh, afford $250,000 or a little bit more each year for death. So, in this case, the building uh, has uh, substantial insurance coverage, up to $20 million. Uh, so, as an attorney, we have to make a decision. Are we going to go for $250,000 for her family, or are we gonna go for $20 million? Well, of course, that's a no-brainer. We're going for $20 million. Uh, this doesn't stop the building from trying to argue at trial or in settlement that why don't you go after the hospital to get something? Uh, well, let them try to accuse a doctor or a hospital of negligence. Uh, and they have the same problem that an attorney who was suing for malpractice would have. You got a jury who's going to say, you know, I don't want to ruin this doctor's career over a case where they were trying to save somebody's life or trying to make them better. So in this particular case, and in many cases like this, when we have auto accidents that involve maybe medical malpractice as well in treatment or slip and falls or trip and falls that, that may have some medical malpractice involved, we have to make a decision. Is it better for the client? Is it better for their family to uh, not allege medical malpractice? And let the, uh, the uh, insurance company or the attorneys for uh, the uh, building or uh, automobile 
that caused the accident, let them try to argue that to a jury, see how successful they are. Um, so that's something that you, when you're looking for a competent attorney that understands all the ins and outs and getting the most money uh, to compensate their client or, or the family of an injured person, uh, make sure you go to an attorney who's done this for a long time and understands the potential uh, for alleging medical malpractice or not alleging it. And if it is a medical malpractice case, again, you can collect a little bit more, but uh, usually not enough to fully compensate an injured person. Hi there. I am an AI avatar reading a real Google review by Amina Balem. Eli J. Castronova is an excellent wrongful death lawyer. He is very professional and dedicated to his clients. He has a great success rate and is very knowledgeable about the law. Thanks for your review, Amina Balem. It's appreciated. Hi there. I am an AI avatar reading a real Google review by Stephen Jose. I contacted Eli after my dog was attacked by another dog. Eli was very responsive and got the ball rolling right away. I felt confident that he would do everything he could to get me the best possible outcome. Thanks for your review, Stephen Jose. It's appreciated.